And first and foremost, I just want to apologize because it's been like two weeks or something like that since I put out my last video. And uh, I went to the track last week. And you know, part of it is I kind of got a little frustrated because I came back from the track and unfortunately, I did not have any footage from me driving my C4 on the track. So really, really frustrating. I was so excited to show some footage to you guys. I took some uh, footage with my camera, uh, my phone camera as well. Uh, not in the car, just watching other racers and, and other people's cars and things like that. Uh, but unfortunately, no footage of me actually driving in my own car on the track, which is really, really frustrating. Uh, really, really bummed out about that. So I apologize. The next time we go to the track is not going to be until September at the earliest, but we'll see what we can figure out between now and then. But still wanted to report to you guys uh, how I did and, and how much fun I had. So without further ado, let's get to the video. So that being said, guys, this is not just hyperbole. You guys see the title of the video. The C4 Corvette really is a great, phenomenal track car. It really, really is. Um, it's just, it, it was so much fun. It handled so well. And obviously for me, uh, having had this car for basically two years now and done some relatively minor modifications to it, it really, really handles really well on the track. Uh, and I know for a lot of people, you might be rolling your eyes saying, well, the car is the, the newest version of the C4 is, you know, 23 years old at this point, being that it's, you know, 96, which mine is. Um, you know, it only had 330 horsepower, you know, at the crank, which who knows what it's doing at the wheels now, being that it's that old. And you would be right in the sense that, yes, the car is not the most powerful car on the track, nowhere close to it. But for those of you out there who are like me, you're a pretty inexperienced driver when it comes to competitive racing and autocross and things like that, this car is plenty for you. Uh, for those of you who uh, follow my channel and subscribe, and if you have not, please do so. Uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. Also click that bell notification so we can make sure that we're all on the same page on updates and things to my channel. You are aware that I do have a 2006 C6 Z06, which is out at Race Proven Motorsports. And in the words of my daughter, It's taking forever. Uh, so we're waiting for them to get back to us. And so once they do that and the car gets back here, uh, we'll have a great time with that. But as of right now, the C4 Corvette is just phenomenal. It, I, I can't say enough about it. Um, the other thing that I would want to address too is the C4, uh, the structural rigidity. You know, even the guys that were up there, the, uh, there were guys that were in their 60s and 70s that have been racing for 30, 40 years. And they said, hey, the C4, they even said, hey, the C4, it's kind of a, it's kind of a flexible flyer. It's kind of a little, a little sloppy out the factory, especially the, the newer ones, ironically, because of the fact that they had softer suspensions. Mine was no exception to that before I upgraded the suspension. So uh, that's definitely true. And ultimately the torsional rigidity of the chassis itself, the C5 is a huge upgrade just in chassis, chassis rigidity over the C4. So there's no concession, there's no, there's, I will totally concede that point. There is no argument there for me, but that being said, if you do the right things to the C4, it is a very, very great, really, really fun uh, track car. So that being said, let me talk about my experience up in Brainerd, which is where I went, which is about two hours north of the Twin Cities. Uh, this event was put on by the Corvette Club, Suburban Corvettes of Minnesota. I'll put their uh, information down in the description of this video. Uh, they put the, the, uh, the event on. There's about 30 Corvettes, 30 cars in total. It wasn't just Corvettes. Uh, a couple of Camaros, old and new. Um, a couple of, um, uh, there was a Porsche 911. There was a Porsche Panamera. Uh, Porsche 911 Turbo, I should say, and a 996. Um, so that was pretty cool. There was a guy who brought a Mazda Speed protege, unfortunately. His car broke on him that day, um, that day, which really sucked. Um, but luckily for him, he trailed it up, so he was able to get back to the cities, no problem. Um, so for me, there's three, so there's, let me talk about my experience. There was three groups that you run in. Group A, which is the most experienced. B is a little less experienced, and then there's the novice group. And at first, I mean, I put myself in the novice group, and at first I was thinking, this is gonna be really boring, even though it's the right thing for me to do. Um, and. For the first 15, 20 minutes, you are definitely sitting in a classroom and you're, you're being shown PowerPoint slides and being talked to about safety and those types of things. And you're hearing the group eight people just flying around the track and just, you know, just exactly what you would expect. But then we got out on the track. There wasn't, a, there weren't hours in the classroom. It was 
maybe 30 minutes max. We got out onto the track. Uh, we At Brainerd, there's also an old go-kart track. So we drove over there and they, gave, they ran us through some braking exercises and taught us about how to brake properly on the track, braking hard, getting all your braking done before uh, you enter the corner, uh, not braking so hard as to lock up your brakes or if you have ABS, engaging the ABS, uh, but making sure that the car gets, drops all of its speed that it, that's necessary before entering the turn and things like that. So they did a great job with that. Also, we got to do follow the leader, which means basically uh, the instructors, they drive the course with you and basically you follow them in your car. And we had about 10 of us or so in the novice group and there were two instructors. So one group of five and then another group of five following the instructor. And basically you had two laps of following the instructor that you would fall back. And then the next person would line up behind the instructor and you would just keep on going uh, for basically a total of 10 laps. So basically 10 hot laps, trying to follow the instructor's line as best you could. Uh, one thing they explained to us though was that different cars have different capabilities and therefore, you know, the instructor's line is not going to be necessarily the best line for you based on the kind of car that you have, based on the suspension characteristics, uh, the amount of power that you have, so on and so forth. But it gave, it gave us a rough, rough estimate of how we should approach each corner, how we should approach the straightaways, and so on and so forth. And uh, they did a great job. I can't say enough about them. Also, the, the uh, instructors, they also, if you're in the novice group, they'll ride with you uh, in your first um, breakout track session. So in your first official session after group A and group B have gone and they've kind of broken for lunch, then you go out and the instructor will go with you and that instructor will basically give you pointers as you enter and exit corners and, and how you're braking, how you're accelerating, you know, how are you holding the wheel, how hard are you turning, so on and so forth. Obviously, if there are faster cars than you out on the track, or they're just out, you know, they're they're out lapping you, you know, doing the polite thing and letting them pass you and, and pointing them by and making sure that they can pass you on the left and safely. Uh, because obviously, we're all going to do better if we are obeying the rules. I mean, if you're trying to hold somebody off and they're much faster than you, that really could become unsafe. So, on that topic of somebody and some somebody being much faster than you, wanted to share a quick funny story. So. To give you uh, an example, so there, the Brainerd track, there's really, there's the Donnybrook track, which is a 3.1 mile track, which includes the straightaway from the drag strip. So the Brainerd International Raceway also has a drag strip. So the straightaway includes the drag strip. Then there's a two and a half mile course that has more corners. It has 13 turns instead of 10, but it's a two and a half mile course because it excludes the drag strip straightaway. Um, so to that, uh, this, this uh, trip that we went on, uh, that day, they were running the full Donnybrook course, which included the straightaway. So I was coming through the straightaway, and to put it in perspective, I got the C4 up to about 135, 136, 137 maybe, was my best, uh, my highest speed before going into turn one right off of the straightaway. To put that in perspective, uh, C7 Z06s that I talked to, guys that were there, C6 Z06s that were modded, uh, there was a guy with a Camaro uh, Z28, and for those of you who remember, the, we're talking the newer Z28, the one that was made in 13 and 14, that had the LS7 from the C6 Z06. Um, those cars were doing about 150, 160, so you see the discrepancy there, but all in all, the C4 still really, really, uh, I felt like held its own. And the motor on my car is completely stopped, just so you guys know. Um, no aftermarket air intake. There's a, I, I did kind of the filter, the air filter mod, but I mean, that's, that's basically it. Um, basically, so I'm coming down the straight, I'm feeling really, really good. I'm almost doing a buck 40. That's the fastest I run all day because I started out doing about a buck 10, buck 15 coming down the straightaway. So, you know, I'm feeling really, really good about myself. And I hit turn two. Um, turn one is a banked corner, so you can kind of hold a lot of your speed, not really hit the brakes too much at all, if at all. Coming into turn two and into turn three, and I'm coming into turn three, which is a hard right, and I look up and there's a C7 Z06 just all in my mirror, just right on top of me, and I'm like, man, I'm doing so good, and now this guy. So he's on top of me, and I realize because I'm kind of nervous, and I didn't realize he was right on top of me, I didn't get all my braking done. So then I get back on the brakes to make that hard right to turn three. Well, of course, what does happen when you brake and turn? You slide. So we slid on the inside of turn three, went straight into the grass, the car was fine. 
we had to come off the track just for safety reasons. They always want to do an inspection when you go two off, or I'm sorry, four off, you have to come off the track. Now I came off the track, I only went two off, but I went four off just to make sure, I, just to make sure I could turn around properly and safely. And I could see people coming, um, rather than trying to turn around on the track. So I went four off, had them inspect the car, and the car was, was fine. We went back on about 15 minutes later. Um, but the C706, uh, those of you guys that are familiar with the performance data recorder, uh, this guy, uh, who also has the same first name as me, Dave, he's like, hey, you want a picture of the footage of you going off track? And I said, sure, why not? So sure enough, that's the uh, picture that you see, is me going off and him showing it on his performance data recorder. Uh, into in turn three, that hard right hander there. So uh, funny, and and it was totally safe. I mean, I, I didn't panic. I didn't feel like the car was gonna totally spin out or anything. My instructor was with me. He immediately was like, you know, what you did wrong. Yes. Um, but it was a super awesome, awesome experience. So I can't say enough about that. And also, guys, this was the most fun I have ever had driving on a track ever. I mean. I've driven Lamborghinis, Ferraris, um, you know, Porsche 911, uh, the Turbo S, um, the Audi R8 V10, both on the street and on the track via various driving experience, whether it be the dri exotic driving experiences. Like in Orlando, there was one. I think that one closed down because of the person that got killed, unfortunately. Uh, the instructor that got killed uh, a few years back. Um, and then, um, there's the one in Las Vegas, and then there's other ones around the country. So I've done I've done a few of those, and so I've had the opportunity to drive those cars on the street and on the track. And driving my own car on the track was way more fun than all that. Not because the car is, because obviously those cars are so powerful, and so and they handle so well, and they sound amazing, but you really don't have enough seat time in those cars if you don't own them to really get good at driving on the track and knowing your car and knowing the, its limitations and knowing how it's going to react to different things. You have time on an open track day to really hone your skills and to see your skills improve and see how well your car performs. And then of course when you make modifications to your car you have the opportunity to see how well it does based on what you've done to it. And so that's why I say this was way more fun. And they even say, I've heard many of the instructors say, we have guys who come up here with 700, 800 horsepower, 1000 horsepower exotic cars or what have you that have no idea how to drive on a track. And we're telling them, hey, you're not really ready for this amount of power because you need to learn how to properly drive safely. Because it's not how fast you can go. They always say it's how fast you can go safely. How fast can you go and still be in control of your car? And so that, to me, that really stuck with me. So even though I got my, my Z06 coming back, you know, I think that the next time I go to the track, I probably will still take the C4. It just, I know that car well now, I know its limitations, I know uh, how it handles, it's, it, it, it's much more comfortable for me to continue to improve my skills and then once I get the Z06 back and I start driving it a little bit more and you know I get comfortable with the power and things like that, I mean how much comfortable can you get with what will probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 horsepower at the crank, 600 plus the wheel, you know. Then I'll talk about, I will definitely bring that to the car, that car to the track at some point. This season, I don't know. There's also some interesting cars up there. There was a 67 uh, Corvette C2. Man, that thing was ripping up and down the track. That thing sounded amazing. It was really fast. I think I might have some footage of that as well. Um, there was also a C4, a red C4 that was completely stripped out. It had, it was, a, it was complete race duty. Um, and that thing sounded amazing and it was ripping as well. And there was also a C3 uh, convertible with a roll cage in it because if you're on the track, you need to have a roll cage. That's the rule if you have a convertible or otherwise you can't exceed 80 miles an hour. Now they also tell you, you can't, uh, uh, basically they don't have radar guns. So I mean, if you're going over 80 and you're in a convertible, I mean, it's not like they're gonna be able to tell. But, um, but that's kind of the general rule uh, for safety. So that car was awesome. That guy was ripping it up and down. So just really, really cool, um, a great experience. Again, I apologize um, if you're just now tuning into this video or uh, to recap, basically um, I do not have footage of myself driving on the track. Um, 
I have footage of my instructor driving an LS430, which I'll show you as well. Uh, he brought his LS430 onto the track and was able to run with some of the novices. A 2001, big boat of a car, but uh, the way he was able to keep the momentum of that car on the track was amazing. So I'll show that as well. But just an awesome time on the track. I highly recommend that you take your C4 program to the track and can definitely handle it as long as you prepare it appropriately. Um, but that's gonna do it for this video, you guys. Uh, keep it locked right here. We've got plenty more content for you guys. Thank you for being patient. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Be blessed, peace out. The other guy they wrote, he says he does have an LS430. He does. Yeah, he does. <laughs> That's great. I had no idea. Yep. Cool. So, brake. Come off the brake before I go in the turn. Coming in, hugging that apex here. And my moving the steering wheel. No, I'm not moving the steering wheel. And then it's going to right out. All my braking done in one felt scoop coming in. It'll go beep, beep, beep if it's right at the limit. Uh, okay. I'll hit this sometimes, it's going up. You see how I'm staying straight? Yep. Really powerful car like yours, you just stay straight, carry a lot more power through it. Kind of in the middle of the track. Now I start turning in a little earlier than normal. To power on out and get up on that. I gotta just use momentum because I got a big ocean liner of a boat. Now, if I go up over that berm, the white chunk, that'd yeah. be really dangerous. Yeah. So stick to the left and turn in. It'll go beep, 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 beep if I'm at the limit. So I'm out, out, now I burn it in. Yep. And hitting the apex, and now I burn it all the way out. All the way wide, there we go, yep. All right. Now this is the infamous turn 10. Yes. There's gonna be this big, long, white line. See, I'm breaking a straight line. Now come down, in. okay. You see how it's splitting yep. that? Yeah, I'm coming over. all the way to the white line. Yeah, a lot of people don't do that because it's really spooky and scary. Yeah, but it's just about knowing the limits of your car and adhesion. Right. Um, and over months or years, you'll you'll learn that. And then check my mirror. A lot of times I'll go like this. Yeah. A lot of people are like clenching. Yeah, clenching. Yeah. Time. Yeah. And so I'll go like that for the straightaway. So right now I'm not braking. And then watch my steering wheel. Then am I am I moving my steering wheel? Nope. No. And look where I end up. Right on the outside. Yep. I gotta brake the once, brake in a straight line, come off the brake, still in a straight line, coming in, in tight on the apex. Not really moving the steering wheel at all, accelerating really smooth. And trying to break once. And using all that exit. And I'm not curling it around. Yeah. I'm trying to like, normally I'd even stay a bit straighter than that. In the middle of the track. Slowly turn in a bit earlier, which not early turn in is not early apex, but I got through there really quick. I really wasn't turning the steering wheel hardly much at all. Yeah. Coming in, really hitting the apex, but using all that exit. Yeah, when I went out the last time, I felt like 
I felt like I got a little more comfortable coming out out of that last turn out under the bridge. Okay. See, I'm still staying to the left, staying yeah. to the left, coming in, letting that one tire yeah. coming in. And over the white line. Which a lot of people don't, you don't have to do necessarily until you really learn your car. Yeah. Would be a minor catastrophe crashing in with all those people there. Uh, yeah. I cannot believe I'm catching this. I this should C7? not be able to catch this Corvette. I think it's nerves. Yeah, I just set the steering wheel and then just do like one motion. Yeah. 